After all the theory development, let us, let us finally do something concrete now and compute the homology of the Klein bottle. So when I say homology, I should fix what I mean by homology. So in this video, let H star just be singular homology. Yeah, so this is supposed to be singular homology. And let us say simply with coefficients in the integers. Okay. So now let us call the Klein bottle K. And for later purpose, let us already say that M denotes the Möbius strip. So let M be the Möbius strip. OK, so how can we compute the homology of the Klein bottle? The first uh, attempt we'll try in this video is to use our long exact collapse sequence for a closed neighborhood deformation retract. And we apply it um, to the following closed neighborhood deformation retract. Namely, recall that actually the Klein bottle is obtained just by gluing two copies of the Möbius strip along the common boundary. Yeah, which means if I take the boundary of the Möbius strip, I embed it here into M, I embed it again into M, then the push-out diagram that this defines just gives me the Klein bottle. And now the embedding of the boundary into the Möbius strip, this is a CNDR, yeah, because I can deform, I can push this boundary a little bit into the interior of the Möbius strip, and this sort of shows that there is, that it's the deformation retract of a closed neighborhood, um, uh, sorry, a deformation retract of a neighborhood, yeah, and also a closed subspace. So this is a closed neighborhood deformation retract, and therefore we've seen before then this also is a closed neighborhood deformation retract, and this embedding of one copy of the Möbius strip into the Klein bottle, this is the closed neighborhood deformation retract, to which we apply now this long exact collapse sequence. Okay, so let me just fix this. So, hence k comma m, this pair of spaces, um, right, is a C and DR. So therefore, we obtain a really long exact sequence. Let us give ourselves a new board for drawing it. So where should we start? Let's not start too late. So let us already start at the third homology of say, okay, and remember, collapse sequence means we're working with reduced homology. So let us take H3 of K mod M here, and then we go to, by the boundary homomorphism to H2M, then H2, K, then H two K collapsed M. Then comes another boundary homomorphism to H one of the uh, Möbius strip. Then H one of the Klein bottle. Maybe I shouldn't draw arrow heads here because this is just one of the same arrow. Yeah, so like this. And where am I? One more first homology, namely the one of K mod M, and then come the zero zero homology groups. So M K, and finally H naught of K mod M. Okay, and now the game is to identify as many groups as possible in this long exact sequence and hopefully then deduce from it also the remaining ones, the ones of the Klein bottle. So first of all, let us discuss what this um, space K mod M actually is. So recall for this 
that actually uh, we already know about another geometrically relevant push out, namely if we take again the CNDR given by the inclusion of the boundary of the Möbius strip and now we don't glue another Möbius strip to this Möbius strip but instead we glue a disk to the Möbius strip. Yeah? So, meaning here this is really the inclusion of the boundary and here the boundary dm which is just S1 yeah, which I did identify with S1 given as the boundary of the two disk and with this input the corresponding push out square gives me a space um, which is also well known namely the real projective plane. Right and now um, why am I telling you this? Well, if I want to consider or if I want to find out what this quotient space is of the Klein bottle modulo one copy of the Möbius strip, then well, I can first of all see that actually K mod M, that is actually homeomorphic to um, M mod DM, right? because this Klein bottle was just this double. You have to take this two Möbius strip, you collapse the one part of it, but that's then actually the same as you just take this other Möbius strip and you collapse the boundary of it to a point. Yeah, this is just the same space, it's homeomorphic. But this now is homeomorphic to, I can use this push out square here and say this is also the same thing as if I had taken the um, RP2 now. Um, do I want to write it like this? Let me see. Yes. RP2 now and I collapse this included disk here yeah because here again I just have this Möbius strip and I collapse whatever I glue to the boundary but that's the same thing as just collapsing the boundary so th therefore this is also homeomorphic to RP2 mod this 2 disk but now RP2 remember is a manifold yeah and this is just like you can think of this D2 here as some embedded disk like as if it was a small neighborhood of a point in this manifold. So if I collapse that disk to a point I do not change the homeomorphism type of the space. So actually this is just RP2. Yeah. And therefore we have identified that this um, strange space, K mod M, occurring here in this long exact sequence, this is actually just a very well known space, namely it's a real projective plane. And that is very helpful because we already computed the homology of the real projective plane, namely um, H1, so the first reduced homology of RP2. This was just isomorphic to Z mod 2 and all the other reduced homology groups vanish. So did we compute this? Or yes, are you computing this from... I'll tell you why Lugevich. we computed this. 0, 4, and not equal to 1. And when did we compute this? We computed this last week in exercise <laughs> Five to B. Okay, so we didn't compute it. We did, we didn't, <laughs> but you did. <laughs> so it was last week's homework. Yeah, but okay. it was already discussed in the exercise. And if somebody session. is watching and hasn't seen the exercise sheet, then yeah, then the homework she, now. Then he or she needs to do it right now. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But the first again, um, nevertheless, uh, via the Hurevich, Hurevich isomorphism, you at least get that H one is Z mod two because we computed, well, then you have to, comp if have, you know you the have fundamental to know group, the fundamental yes, group, yes. Right, which right. you um, know from covering theory since it's covered by S2 by, uh, via twofold uh, covering and this is the universal cover. Yes, so but now you're yeah. explaining the solution to the homework. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But right, yes. One can use Hurevich to find the first one and essentially we also know what the zeros is because of what we did before. So maybe the only question is really the second homology group. Okay, but this is now um, stuff we know and we will use. Let me try to move this up a little so that I have more space. That never worked before. Yeah, I am optimistic. There we go. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Okay, so now we can um, use this knowledge now and see here, okay, H3 of the real projective plane, that's zero. 
where do we have it again? Here we have H2 of the real projective plane. We also know that that is zero. We have H1 of the real projective plane. We know that that is Z mod two. And here we got zero, the zeros reduced homology of the reprojective plane, and that's also zero. Yeah? So here it's important that there's a twiddle on the H. Okay, so what more can we say? Well, we have the Möbius strip M here appearing in the sequence, and the Möbius strip is actually homotopy equivalent to the circle. Yeah? You can deformation retract it onto the middle circle of this Möbius strip. And therefore, the homology of the Möbius strip is the same as the homology of the circle. And that one we did compute, and we even did compute it in a video, I guess. <laughs> so therefore, this is also zero. The circle doesn't have any second homology. Then we've got the first reduced homology of the circle, and this we know is the integers. And then we've got the zeros reduced homology of the circle, and that's zero. Okay. So these are sort of the homology groups um, the other homology groups in terms of which we now want to find the homology groups of the Klein bottle and let's see if we can already get cheap conclusions here and actually we do because since this is the zero object this is the zero arrow and since this is the zero object this one is also the zero arrow and uh, between two adjacent zero morphisms in a long exact sequence only one object fits namely the zero the trivial one. So the second homology, reduced homology group of the Klein bottle is zero. Okay, so what else do we got? So here is another one of interest. So uh, well, first of all, the same argument works down here. Yeah. So again, the zero homology group of the Klein bottle occurs between two zero arrows, and therefore this is also zero. So the only one we still have to talk about is the first homology group of the Klein bottle. And there we at least know that, well, here we've got a zero, meaning here this morphism is zero. Here we've got a zero, so this morphism here is zero. And now we see we've got a short exact sequence appearing within this long exact sequence. Yeah, a zero arrow, then three terms, this one, this one, and then again a zero arrow. And the one we're interested in occurs exactly in the middle of the short exact sequence. Yeah? But now the problem is we are not yet done. We cannot yet decide what it is because if the left term here is a Z and the right hand term is a Z mod two, then there are actually two possibilities of what the short exact sequence could be. Namely one possibility would be that this group here is actually just the integers and this morphism here would be, whoops, this morphism here would be multiplication by two. And in this case, this would give the correct short exact sequence if the final arrow here is just the projection map. So this is one possibility. This would be the so-called non-split case. But there's also yet another possibility. It could be that the short exact sequence splits, which would mean that this middle term is just the direct sum of the two outer terms. Yeah? And the two arrows would just be the canonical inclusion and projection into and from this direct sum. So we have to decide which of the two cases is the correct one. And actually, I shall already tell you what will happen. It turns out that actually this short exact sequence is split. And why is it split? Because we have a splitting already on the level of spaces. So the Klein bottle here yeah, was the double of the Möbius strip. So you have two copies of the Möbius strip glued together at the boundary. But then, of course, you have on the level of spaces a reverse map from the Klein bottle into the Möbius strip, yeah, which restricts to the identity on this one copy of the Möbius strip. And applying the H twiddle functor, this actually gives us a splitting of the short exact sequence. So let me write this down. So second point here, we actually have a retract. So we have a retract R from the Klein bottle into M such that if I first of all if I first of all include the um, Möbius strip into the Klein bottle and afterwards I apply my map R, then I actually get the identity on the Möbius strip. So 
So maybe let's go back. What's the retract again? Yes, let's discuss what it is. So here we've got our push-out square. Yeah? And now I claim I can use the following map here. So in the climb bottle, yeah, each point either lies in the one copy of M or in the other copy of M or in both. Yeah? So if it lies in only one copy of them, well, then I just take this unique pre-image I've got here. Yeah, I mean, this is injective. This is also injective. I mean, this is the same map. Yeah, this is also C and DR. This is also C and DR. So if a point in K lies in only in either of the two copies, I take this point as the image of my map. And now I only have one issue about well-definedness. It could happen that a point lies in both copies of M here, but that happens if and only if it lies in the boundary. Of, of the Möbius strips, yeah? But then actually those two points are the same, yeah? Because if I had taken this um, pre-image here, then this would come from here. And if I had taken this pre-image here, then it would have come from here. And both those pre-images map to the same element here, yeah? But this composition, which is the same on both sides, is injective. Yeah. Mm, yes, that's true. But a slightly alternative argument is just using the push-out property. You have the identity map, you have another space which is again M, okay. and you have the identity maps from the corners of ah, the push-out to M, yes. and the push-out property gives you a map from K to M, and that's the retract. Perfect. So we have M here, we've got the identity of M here, we've got the identity of M here, and the universal property of the push-out says we've mm -hmm. got this unique arrow making the diagram commute. And this does have, well, by definition, it does now have the property that if I first embed M into K and then I go along here, this arrow I get, so this is R, then I do get um, the identity as required. Perfect. So this was the way better argument. And now we use that, whoops, that h twiddle is a functor and we apply it to this identity and therefore we get um, h n twiddle of r. So functoriality gives the um, compatibility here with the composition. And also functoriality gives you that h twiddle of the identity is the identity of h twiddle of m. And therefore, what we obtain in this long exact sequence is, um, where are we? We're here. We get a splitting in this direction. Yeah, so this is H1 twiddle R. And the splitting lemma tells us then, actually then also we get the splitting from here to here. Yeah. And the splitting lemma now also tells us that the middle term is the direct sum of the two outer terms and the two arrows are actually just identified with inclusion and projection into and from this direct sum. Therefore, it follows that this is Z plus Z, whoops, Z plus Z mod 2. To have a reference, let us collect what we computed now. So the nth reduced homology of RP2. This is what comes out of this discussion. Ah, not RP2, excuse me. Of the Klein bottle is isomorphic to Z plus Z mod 2 if n equals 1. Aha. Uh -huh. And yeah, let us now actually, I said I want to compute the homology, so let us now leave out the reduced part here. And since we computed that the reduced homology is zero in degree zero, it must therefore, since it's a path-connected space, now be the integers for n equals zero. Oops. And finally, in all other cases, the homology is zero.